Hello, everyone. Welcome back for another episode of The Market Bites. I'm Sam North, and I'm joined by Josh Gilbert out in Sydney, Australia. Josh, how are you? I am good today, Sam. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, yeah, very well. Very well. We're, we've, we've got a bit of blue sky here. It's probably going to be the last of the summer sun. And I guess you're almost heading into the nice weather. It's, bit, it's, it's like the crossover now, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, we don't get the beauty of having those sort of like late summer nights. Mm. Um, so it's 5 p.m. here in Sydney and I'm looking out and it's dark and it has rained today. So I'm I'm putting the the back of uh, of winter um, into into the cupboard because, yeah, we're going to have those nice days coming back. But I must say it has been a beautiful winter. If, if winters can be beautiful, it hasn't rained very much. It's been very sunny, but cold. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to the uh, the summer months. Absolutely. I bet people didn't think they were going to be tuning on to the podcast and hearing us talking about the weather, but we're full of surprises. Um, Today, we're going to talk about NVIDIA. We'll talk about Zoom and Jackson Hole. Uh, Also, just a quick reminder on fantasy football. You've got until, well, pretty much seven, eight days until you can join that. So if you've got a team and you want to join You've got eight days to do so. Um, I think that if your points will still be put towards the league anyway. So the cutoff is the 31st of August and you've got until then to join. Josh, sound good on your side on the topics, etc.? It does sound good. And yeah, I, I'd like to challenge anybody to come and join the league and, and knock me off the top spot, I must say, Sam. So Two weeks in a row. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, the two, only way two is down, yeah, as I yeah. said. But... Uh, yeah, we need someone to do that. So someone can please join and do that. I can't sit here every week with Josh on top. Um, let's move on very quickly then. First up, the big one. It is the big one, isn't it? Uh, NVIDIA's yes. latest earnings report. Uh, as the saying goes, uh, we've said the best for last, kind of. I mean, obviously there was a few more companies to come, but it, it's, it's the last big one. Uh, the face of the AI hype train, but is it about to be derailed? Uh, we're going to find out. An amazing reaction last time, seeing the stock become only the ninth ever trillion dollar company. It's currently the sixth biggest company in the world. It is over a trillion as it stands right now as well. Uh, it heads into the report over 200% up for the year. Josh, what are we looking for? What we're we expecting? I mean, listen, it's the big one. It's absolutely the big one. Yeah, it's the poster boy of AI. And it's got some very, very big weights on its shoulders. It's got 250 kg dumbbells stacked (laughs) on there with that 200% gain year to date. Um, So when it reports those Q2 earnings this week, it is, uh, you know, it's going to feel the, feel the weight of those 50 kilo dumbbells on each shoulder. Um, The the focal point though, it's going to be that investors want to see this AI hype that you mentioned translate into revenue and earnings growth because they, they forecasted a huge quarter last time out, which is why we've seen so much of, of this good news recently. So I'll recap it. I'll take us back to Q1 earnings earlier this year. NVIDIA basically shocked Wall Street. They offered what was arguably one of the most bullish revenue forecasts markets have probably ever seen from a company of this magnitude. Um, they forecasted Q2 revenue of $11 billion, which was well ahead of analyst estimates at about $7 billion. And CEO Jensen Hung basically said that they've got unprecedented unprecedented demand for its chips that are required to train and power AI services. But that's all well and good, but you've got to deliver on it, right? You can you can say we expect this much growth. You know, I think revenue is expected at 64% growth in the quarter. Earnings are expected to jump by about 300%, but you have to deliver on that. And if you don't, as we've said, with those, we've said it a couple of times on the podcast, price to sales ratios that are massive, price to earnings ratios that are absolutely massive. There's no margin for error. But I think it's worth noting just to sort of, again, roll it back even further, you know, this sort of AI hype that we're talking about with NVIDIA, it hasn't just sort of come out of nowhere. They haven't just sort of brought this out overnight. Um, Jensen Huang, who I mentioned there, he's the NVIDIA CEO. He's been betting on AI for over a decade now. He believed that his chips would be the focal point in AI, which is essentially what they are now becoming. So his sort of, you know, sort of focal point, his vision is now becoming a reality. Um, a bit of a, a bit of a fact, he actually delivered a server in 2016 to Elon Musk and Sam Altman. So Sam Altman is the uh, CEO of OpenAI, but Elon Musk was actually a co-founder of OpenAI as well back in 2016. So although Musk and, and Sam Altman are no longer 
a unit. They they both obviously have their separate businesses. They are both aligned in the fact that they, you know, are both demanding chips from NVIDIA. You know, Musk recently said that Tesla was using so many, you know, NVIDIA chips and so much NVIDIA hardware, they would take it as fast as NVIDIA could deliver it. And then Sam Altman obviously is is using um, those chips, you know, obviously to, to power chat GPT at the same time. So again, what he delivered in 2016 was, was this vision of, of what we have now. And in this AI boom, NVIDIA is selling the picks and the shovels. And with so much demand for AI, everyone needs those work tools right now. Um, NVIDIA owns 80% of the market for a particular chip called a data center accelerator. That's what's needed to power AI. And the current wait time for one of its processes like that for AI, it's eight months. So there's huge demand here. So it, it, we may not see all of that revenue um, growth translate immediately. But again, it, it's, it, it seems as if it's on the way. Um, so it, the, the main driver is going to come from the data center revenue. That's going to be up 110%. That's what the market expects. That's going to be coming from the AI chip, the A100, which is that sort of flagship uh, chip in, in the AI world. But I think we, we've got to expect that that number could even be higher. Um, as I say, we've, they've got to deliver, but maybe their forecasts are even below what, what they think they can deliver because... You know, as I said there, Tesla is just one name. You've got Alibaba, Tencent, Microsoft. We've got, you know, huge countries with billions of trillions of dollars behind them. Saudi Arabia, the UAE demanding these chips. So I think the good news for investors is that if NVIDIA can sort of translate that AI hype into higher sales, then I think this is just the beginning. Yeah. yeah I mean, listen, it is massive. It really is. I and mean, if you go back to the quarter one, um report i mean this was sort of back end of of may this year the s p rose significantly that week and never looked back going on another 15 percent up to to the previous high we've, we've just had so massive report um like you said expectations are high a uh, miss and i mean this thing has a long way to to go lower uh, there's gaps that need to get filled to the downside but look we, we've got to wait and see how that goes. And uh, for anyone looking to potentially trade it or invest in it, have patience as well. Don't feel like you need to jump in straight away. Let the dust settle before you make any decision. Um, next up for us is Zoom. And, and listen, this certainly isn't up 200, 220% this year at the moment. However, it is positive, uh, just. Uh, is the tide starting to turn or are we going to be looking back at this particular stock and looking back at the pandemic high as a distant memory that will never reach again they reported their earnings earlier this week how did you see it what are you feeling what are other people feeling it will initially again top level view yeah it's good news yeah beat across the board um we saw shares sort of rally initially after hours sort of those key metrics were sort of met I think it rallied as much as 13% after hours. Um, but that was pretty short-lived. Shares fell 2% in the session following the results, so on Tuesday's session. And shares are down 88% from their highs. So it's easy to see why you know, the, the bears are in control here, um, even with that sort of upbeat result. Um, and they even had a beat on forecast as well. But I think throw in the sort of broader mark, market weakness that we've seen from you know, the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, over the last sort of couple of weeks, um, you know, it needed a, a really, really strong result. And I'm not sure it was exactly that. Revenue grew three and a half percent. Net income was up 26%. As I said, its forecast was also good. Um, Four-year outlook was 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 raised. So I think the the market initially ran with those with those with those positive um data points, you know, the 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 upgrade to full year outlook and obviously the beat on on net income and revenue. But analysts were sort of quick to point out that long-term growth actually looked pretty cloudy. Um, the business is facing plenty of challenges moving forward. That's reflected in price targets. You know, Bloomberg has um, 35 analysts on this stock. Eight uh, are saying buy, one sell, and 26 holds. So again, you know, a lot of you know analysts saying look, we don't love it as it is at the moment. We're certainly not going to be rushing to sort of buy it. Um, but maybe they're, they're not so, you know, after such a huge fall from, you know, that pandemic high, maybe not a lot of downside left with this sort of positive result. But I think we aren't seeing that growth that we saw two years ago. 
when we saw growth figures, you know, from Zoom, absolutely, you know, reach crazy levels, you know, hundreds of percent gains, you know, but there is some still some healthy growth. We had enterprise customer count continuing to move in the right direction. Um, but I think, again, it's a far cry from what we've seen in the past, which is, is you know, what investors aren't expecting. They they want those numbers that they saw in the past, um, but they're, they're not they're not getting that. Um, they're making a bit of progress, cost cutting measures. Um, they're slowing down some spending on, on sales and marketing. That's helping margins a little bit. They're being strategic with spending. They're focusing on, on cloud and, and they're making efforts into AI. They've got some strategic investments there that they mentioned on, on the call. But as I said, I don't think for now, this is a stock to be excited about. I think there's so much competition in this space from, from Microsoft, Google, just to sort of name a few, um, I actually had a, an interview today on on Skype um, for um, for 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 a press um, interview and and essentially they were I was I asked a question I said you know I'm I'm talking about Zoom looking at the results and how how come you use you know, Skype over Zoom and they said Skype is is just far better quality et cetera et cetera so I just think you know again they they seem to sort of be lacking in in some areas and, and unless that can improve uh, then I think they're going to fall behind and with you know Microsoft and Google's balance sheets. You know, they can do anything they like. So to put a positive spin on that, the only thing I would say is I don't think hybrid working is is going away anytime soon. In my opinion, I think this is here to stay. So I think we're going to have more you know, conversations virtually. So demand therefore may only grow uh, and that it may come back in a bigger and better way, especially maybe when we see the end of this sort of growth slowdown, you know, particularly in the US. Uh, but for now, you know, again, not something I think investors are getting overly excited about. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's it's one of those ones where if it does recover to to where it came from, then as in that all time high, it's an insane return. Obviously, very unlikely at this moment to even envisage that happening. Um, there's also actually a few other interesting stocks um, that are at significant lows. One of them is AMC, which I know is is uh, or has been quite a popular stock with the retail crowd before. Um, that's at the level it traded at in sort of 2021 and 2020 the last time it traded here josh it went up 3900 percent um so if that happens again and i tweeted this yesterday if that happens again i'm going to convert to a tottenham fan that's how confident wow. i am that it's not wow. going to happen uh and they're on also, record as well you could have deleted that tweet but that you can't delete this podcast mate well, that's it. And, and and I think a few people have already sort of uh, bookmarked it uh, to sort of <laughs> see. Um, there's also, and I, I wrote these down the other day, so I'm just bringing them up. Pfizer, last time it traded where it's trading right now, March 2021, it then went up 75%. I'm not sure if that's on many people's watch lists, though, at the moment. Disney, the last time it traded in this zone was December 22, and then actually quite a few other periods it's never actually been below this level for quite some time back in 2020 and 2014 back in 2020 it went up 140 percent from this level does that interest people i want to know paypal i'm starting to see a few people come out on on twitter and x and saying okay yeah let me have a bit of paypal in the same way people did about meta so they're if you look at the comments they're like no way this stock's going nowhere so it'll be interesting again to fast forward and see what happens there last time it traded where it is right now summer 2017 where it went up 400 percent overall earnings wise day performance uh microsoft was down four percent on the day apple down 4.8 google was up 5.5 amazon up 8.2 tesla down 9.7 so so really if you sort of miss earnings you're going to come under a bit of pressure but if you just about be you're, you're going to be okay but nvidia i mean everyone's got their eyes on that josh yeah it's it's the big one it is the beginning as you say i think we've said the best till sort of last really because from q1 earnings with that forecast everyone was sort of watching this and i think it's a huge market event i mean it's going to be a bit of a tussle isn't it we've got the jackson hole uh on friday and then you've got nvidia earnings and it's a bit of a tussle on okay who's who's going to be the market mover here is it going to be is it going to be jerome powell or is it going to be nvidia um and i think that is you know a key event for, for the week you know we've got jerome powell speaking at the jackson hole the last time he spoke at the jackson hole his comments sent markets pretty wildly into reserve into reverse so uh are we going to expect the same this time around sam or do you think markets will rebound after three consecutive down weeks of losses do you think jerome powell can give us some optimism 
Well, I know what I want. Uh, r- remains to be seen where it will be delivered. Uh, well, firstly, I mean, what is Jackson Hole? Where is it? What's it famous for? Um, I mean, this is all, what we all want to know, right? Uh, well, mm-hmm. Jackson Hole is in Wyoming, which is a state in the sort of the Mountain West sub-region of the United States, a Western United States. Now, for those that aren't central bankers and wondering what you can do there, you might be thinking, OK, well, I have a little holiday there. It's supposedly famous for its skiing, its fishing, its rafting, ranches, fine dining and more. It's also the nation's wealthiest area by a very long way, actually, which kind of makes sense why these central bankers uh, are going there. It does, doesn't it? You know, they're not going to go to uh, to Bognor Regis. No offense to anyone that lives in Bognor Regis. It's obviously not Wyoming, um, Jackson Hole. Uh, but yeah, look, makes sense why they're there. Uh, next up then, what is the Jackson Hole Symposium and how can it help or, you know, derail traders and investors' dreams, I guess, in the short, medium and, and long term? I mean, look, it's going to be pretty significant heading into this it can offer insights into the central bankers monetary policy intentions and their economic assessments so we'll be looking out for comments that get leaked around that from any of the speeches the speeches that they do uh and the following discussion particularly as you mentioned there josh from jerome powell the fed chair they're going to be important um it provides guidance on future policy actions and therefore it's going to influence decisions of investors it's going to influence asset allocation going forward and then also you'd expect movement in the us dollar or any other currency depending on that so it's going to be an interesting event it's got the potential for market volatility um but what i would say is it's got potential for market volatility volatility based on what happened last year. Mm. In my early years as a trader, um, it would be almost you hear Jackson Hole is coming and you pack up your bags and go home because it's such a non-event. It's boring. It's just a long couple of days when nothing really happens and, and you just lock off for the week. Last week, last year changed that. As you mentioned, it sort of marked a, a short term top in, in the markets. It was, I think, August 25th last year. And we'd sort of headed up into August. Yes, we'd had a, a down week or two before Jackson Hole. But what happened then is that we then moved down to the, the low of the year in October before reversing. We're heading into this one with, with three down weeks in a row, as you, as you sort of alluded to there. Yes, we're a little bit positive for the week. I wonder if Jack, if uh, Jerome Powell thinks, you know what, the market's kind of done the work for me that I might have needed to do if we had headed into this with six positive weeks in a row. So we've had three positive, we've had three negative. Um, so yeah, usually a non-event, but this year uh, I would say it's more interesting. You've got analysts at Investec. They believe the event's going to provide insight into central banks' thoughts on the medium-term economic matters, which you'd expect anyway. Uh, Despite recent policy-related comments, the symposium value lies in guiding global markets. The Fed is going to maintain the option to rise rates and remains cautious about inflation. They see, obviously, as we mentioned in previous podcasts, they see potential risks. Economic activity is slowing but the officials view this as essential for restoring balance. One thing I would mention as well is we're currently, as of the time of recording this podcast on Wednesday, 8.26 a.m. UK time, we're 28 days, 10 hours, 33 minutes and 40 seconds away from the next Federal Reserve meeting. A hike at the moment is priced in around 15% of the time, 15%, I should say, and there's obviously a chance that that could change uh as well uh we keep hearing the word data dependency that's probably going to continue as well but that could also mean that markets are going to underprice future hikes um while acknowledging growth raises uh recession risks there as well so i think it'll be interesting i'd, I'd still have nvidia as the number one event i think we've got potential for jackson hole to move markets there's going to be a lot of eyes on it because of what happened last year But also, I would say if it was a non-event, that wouldn't massively, massively surprise me. Yeah. And I think, look, when you have two sort of big events clashing at the same time for this, you you sort of tend to see that little bit of risk off as well. I mean, you'll know that better than than me as well. And 
you know, with NVIDIA going into this result. I think with, with NVIDIA, it's one of those, if, if you're holding, you know, you're not going to sell it going into the event. But if you're holding a, a trade, it's a difficult trade to sort of go into this earnings because you know there's going to be so much volatility e either way. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a pretty big end to the week. Anyone thought that they could sort of, you know, leave early for the week? They're, they're not quite getting that. No, no. Last full week of August, of course, the last week, last day of the month is going to be next Thursday, August the 31st. So, uh, yeah, at least uh, we've got a good month seasonality wise next. Oh, hang on. No, it's September, which, of course, is the worst month of the stock market. Back to school as well. Uh, but look, Josh, we'll wrap it there for today. I hope uh, everyone enjoyed it. Um, I believe you're you're off on a, a lovely holiday. So we won't you won't be with us next week, will you? No, I won't. Yeah, a couple of weeks off, so uh, you won't have the pleasure of my voice. You'll have Sam and and special guests. We'll yes. leave that for uh, uh, for people to decide who. But um, but yeah, off for three weeks, and uh, I will be back refreshed and ready to go again uh, when I'm back. Amazing. Well, look, have a good time, and everyone stay safe, trade well, take care. Bye, everyone.